What's going on guys? Hope you're having a great day. So one of the questions that I get asked a lot is about the CNC machine. I get asked, well, how do I feel about it? How well it runs? What are some of the specs? Things like that. Now, a CNC machine is something that a lot of people go back and forth about, especially online. Uh, there are a lot of purist woodworkers that think you should only do woodworking with hand tools or at least minimal machinery. And that's great. Uh, you know, if you have the patience and the skill for that, kudos to you. I, I wish I did. And also, that being said, I cannot see hand tooling in any way beating the precision of a CNC machine. How precise this machine can be is absolutely stunning. And another thing is, is that you can crank out projects. If you do things like go to trade shows or sell online or anything like that, a CNC machine is a godsend to you. That It, it can literally change your business. Uh, it has helped me with a lot of things that before I was too intimidated to get into doing just because of the precision needed to do it. And something like inlays and things like that, you can do it with a V-carve inlay now in half the time and all of the precision. So that being said, I want to take a look at my machine. This is an I2R8, two foot by four foot CNC machine from imagination to reality. This is the I2R8 UC CNC. It is a great machine. I love this machine and I want to go over some of the really high points and a couple of the not so high, but I, I have not really found any true negatives with the machine for what I do. Uh, there are just a couple of things that I, I found along the way while working with the machine. So that being said, guys, let's jump right into it and let's take a look at this beast. The first thing that has to be done is assembling the machine. The machine goes together actually really well. The uh, base and the bed of the machine are designed to fit together really well. It does have a mobile base, but I'll talk more about that in a bit. To put the machine together, I do have a video on unboxing and putting the machine together. If you would like to check that out, I would leave a link in the description below. Uh, just make sure you have a little help setting the bed of the machine into place. But assembly is very straightforward and not very complicated. It can be done with simple hand tools or if you would like maybe a small impact or drill with some Allen bits. Like I said before, this is the I2R8. Now this is a two foot by four foot machine and I absolutely love the larger working area. It gives you the ability to do more things that you could not do with some of the smaller machines. The table bed is made from extruded aluminum with a MDF cutting area. Now these are really nice because you can cut into them and then just shave them down to get a flat surface again. And once they're used up, you simply cut some MDF pieces and add new ones back. I have already flattened mine a couple of times and we'll be removing some of the cut grooves into it very soon. Also, the T-grooves with the extruded aluminum make clamping down your project extremely secure and very quick. The mobile base is an all-steel construction with an adjustable shelf that you can mount at a couple of different heights. Now also, this is a mobile base with casters. These casters are very secure. The machine does not move at all once the casters are locked down. They just are a little work to lift and lower, but you can move the machine around. I also got a few accessories in the box, such as the wrenches for the spindle collet, the Z-axis touch-off pad for setting your Z-axis, and a dust boot. I also elected to get the I2R clamps. These work great holding the material in place and really help speed up the process. At the heart of this machine, there is a 1 horsepower, 13 amp, single phase, 115 volt motor. 
Now, this spindle motor works extremely well, and I have not found any issues with it. It will spin up to 24,000 RPM and also accepts quarter-inch shanked bits. Now, when I first got this machine, I thought it would maybe be a problem that I could not use half-inch shank bits, but I have honestly not found an application where I have to have them. Setting your feed rates and your spindle speed properly, and you can use a quarter-inch shank bit for pretty much anything also the wrenches that come with the machine to fit the spindle for installing the collet nut and tightening it down work extremely well i haven't had any issues with it slipping off or the collet nut rounding off or anything they're all extremely well made and i'm very happy with this setup i haven't had any bits try to back down or loosen up or anything like that while using the machine with this machine, the positional accuracy is actually very impressive in my opinion. On the spec sheet, it is plus or minus 0.15 millimeters, and this is extremely accurate. I honestly think it's pretty close to zero at most times, as I have done some very small engravings and some very detailed work, and it has had zero issues being spot on every single time. To keep up this precision, I2R uses a 15 millimeter ball screw shaft on all three X, Y, and Z axes and also has Zerk fittings to allow for greasing of the shafts to keep up with your maintenance. This also improves your reliability as well as the precision, allowing for less friction as the machine moves through its sequences. For dust collection, the I2R uses a 2 inch dust port th through a Lexan plate held in place on the end of the spindle with a removable bristled dust boot that helps to keep the dust from being pushed out into the room and also sweeps up some of the spare dust allowing the dust collection to pick it up. Now I did have the collection run to my dust right dust collector via a coupler down to a 2 inch hose. I have since went to a 2 inch coupler directly onto the dust boot plate itself and this works really really well. Now one thing I do want to say is that you should really make sure that your dust boot is properly attached before starting your machine. If it is not it can fall off during cutting. But but this is something that you have to deal with with almost all CNC dust boot systems. This is a pretty normal system. Just the only difference is, is kind of the 2 inch dust port. I really didn't know how well it was going to work until I really started putting the machine through its paces. But it does work quite well and picks up pretty well. Especially with the 2 inch adapter and a 4 inch dust collector hose directly to it. For controls, the I2R is controlled by a central control box that is hooked to a computer via an Ethernet cable. The controller you use is a UC CNC program that is supplied with your machine, and it is run on a computer. Now, one misconception is that you need an extremely strong gaming style computer or high computing power computer, and you really don't. I run this off of a laptop, and honestly, all you need is is a computer with the compatible Windows operations to run UCCNC and you have full access to the program. This program is an extremely strong controller for this machine. You can literally access pretty much any single part of the machine to change settings or control whatever you would like to control. It also has adaptions that can be used for things like lasers or I believe even rotary assemblies but this is something that is an accessory you would have to have on your machine and honestly I'm not going to do a tutorial on UCC and C at the moment I just want to say that the program is very easy to learn and it is something that you can pick up very quickly and is 
very simple and you can control every aspect of the machine's movement right there off your keyboard of your computer or also there is a way to hook things like ps3 and xbox controllers to the machine and use that to jog your machine around and like i said the more i have used uccnc it is an amazing amazing controller and the more i use it the more i love it I do eventually plan on filming some UCC and C tutorials. Just at this moment, I want you guys to know just how great of a program it is and that it is something that's well worth having. I find that it's very advantageous and it has a lot of aspects that cannot be done by other controllers. Now that being said, I also want to touch a little bit on how I create the G-code for all of my cuts. For that, I use Vetric V-Carve. Now this is not something that comes with the machine, but it can be purchased through i2rcnc.com when you purchase your machine. Now, this is something that if you know anyone that has a CNC machine, feel free to ask them anything you would like about an opinion on VCAR Pro, and it is extremely worth every cent that this program costs. It is such an intuitive and powerful program, especially for doing CNC cutting, that it is just irreplaceable. So this is something that if you buy the machine, I do highly suggest that you look into getting Vetric VCarve Pro. Again, it is not something that is absolutely required as you can use websites like easel.com to create your G-codes for the cuts you're making on the machine, but they kind of pale in comparison to this program and its capabilities, and not only how accurate and amazing the program is as far as tooling and things like that, but also just the speed of design you can do in Vetric. So again, this is not something you absolutely have to have, but I do highly, highly suggest this program, especially along with the UCCNC that is the controller for the I2R. They work perfectly together and they seamlessly match up and there's zero problems that I've had so far with the UCC and C program reading G code that was created inside of Vetric. So again, just some food for thought. It's not something you have to have, but if at all possible, I highly recommend getting this program. Okay guys, so for the bits and cutting, I want to explain a little bit about the Z touch off pad that comes with the I2R machine. Now what you're going to do is you're going to home your machine and then you're going to set your machine to zero at the corner or the center of the cut. Now this is determined inside VCarve and you can change that inside the program. I use the bottom left hand corner so you line up the tip of your bit to the bottom left hand corner of your material and then you set your X and Y axis zero and what this does is tells the machine that you are at the bottom corner where it tells it to start. Try to be as accurate as you can be with this placement of your zeros as this will control where the machine cuts and how precise the cuts are. But once you have your X and Y set, you then place the Z touch off pad onto the material or the machine bed, depending on what you have your V-carve set up for, and then hit this button here in UCC and C, and this will automatically lower the bit until it touches the touch off pad, telling the machine the exact position of the tip of the bit. This is a really handy tool, and I just thought you guys should see this portion and see how easy it is to get your depth just right with this little accessory. As far as bits go, you can use really any quarter inch shank CNC bit you would like, but I highly suggest you guys go check out bitsandbits.com. Now, this company is great and their bits are awesome. Not only do they carry a full selection of white side bits, 
but most of their bits, even the white side they sell, are coated in their proprietary Astra coating, and this gives the blade a little bit longer life, as well as keeps the edge a little sharper. I've cut everything from hardwoods to Lexand to plywood with them, and I have made a bunch of cuts on a single blade and not had any trouble. It is still sharp and still cuts extremely clean. And this machine, the I2R, can handle cutting most materials, including some soft metals like brass or aluminum. I wouldn't try to cut things like super hard materials such as steel, but if you take your time you really can cut almost anything with it especially if you have the correct bit for the job now one thing that is kind of overlooked sometimes is your machine settings is what makes your cut having a great bit makes all the difference in the world but then setting your machine settings perfectly will also make a huge huge difference in how well the machine as well as the bit cuts but again these bits that I use from bitsandbits.com also last a long time and keep a really sharp edge and it's something that has made a big difference and made things much easier knowing that I can trust the bit that I put into the machine. Make sure to check out the description below for the link to go check out Bits and Bits. You will love these bits, especially if you do a lot of cutting on your CNC. Don't take just my word for it. Get a couple of the bits, use them for yourself, and then you will see how great they are. Let me know in the comments if you have any and what you think of them. In conclusion guys, the I2R8 is an awesome machine, especially as a beginning level or intermediate level CNC machine that you would like to expand your business and if you would like to find ways to make new creative stuff that's really difficult to make by hand make sure to go check these guys out. I am super impressed with this machine. When I first got it, I honestly didn't know much about CNCing, and I have learned so much about it over the last while, and it's something that I have absolutely fell in love with. It's amazing how easy this machine makes doing complex projects so much easier and can really upgrade your business in the way that you can batch out things and create products that you can sell so much faster than if you were to be doing everything by hand and having to try to get precise exact matches or cuts the exact same time every single time. So this is something that I hope you guys have really enjoyed is seeing about this I2R8 machine and I'm going to be doing more and more with it and I'll also be doing some full tutorials with it and the UCC and C program. If you want to check out I2R or any of their machines i'll leave a link in the description below make sure to go check them out also head over and go check out bits bits.com i'll also leave a link in the description to get you to their website so you can check those guys out as well so guys i really hope you have enjoyed this and i really appreciate it and we'll see you on the next one